What's up guys, it's Scootman5000. Today we're back for another action figure review. And today we're looking at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Green Lantern John Stewart. The second figure in the newest wave from McFarlane. I did previously look at the Nightwing Joker. I picked that one up nice and early off of Twitter. This guy I just found in the stores. So we're two thirds of the way there with this wave. Still looking for Bizarro, but he'll show up soon enough. For now, this is definitely gonna be the most exciting figure in the wave. We got a nice, clean and simple, comic accurate, John Stewart Green Lantern, a core DC character, not a Bat variant or something from an obscure kind of Dark Knight's Metal type of comic or anything like that. This is really core DC stuff. This is what, you know, a good section of fans want to see from McFarlane is just some core characters dumb. He can have a nice line. And this especially contributes towards the Justice League team. I mean, we still need Martian Manhunter. We still need a good Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Hawk Girl, whatever have you. But this is a step. This is a great uh, first venture into kind of completing that team and it seems like McFarlane does like Jon Stewart because he also was the animated figure obviously in wave one and other than the Bat Dawnbreaker this is the only other lantern figure that we have so we have two Jon Stewart's and a Batman that's our Green Lantern core right now for me I'd love to see Hal Jordan uh, really just Kilowog any of those Green Lantern core that's really uh, one of my favorite sections of comics but hey we're making steps we're getting a nice Jon Stewart action figure I think this comes from DC Rebirth we'll find that out on the card you can see on the side, just some continuation text, some window there, and then on the back is the card artwork. Doesn't really look much like the actual figure, but still a nice piece of art. This comes from Justice League in 2018, so I guess it's DC Rebirth, but it's a bit late in Rebirth. But that does about cover packaging, so let's get to it and let's open up Jon Stewart. <laughs> And here is the Green Lantern John Stewart out of the packaging, and he's looking pretty impressive. As for accessories, as always, he's got the figure stand. He's also got the trading card. He comes from DC Rebirth, Justice League number six, comics 2018. But for his real accessories, the first one is strange to me. He's got a survival pack, backpack, whatever you want to call it, uh, Green Lantern construct. And, you know, the armor makes sense, the weapon makes sense, but does he really need to conjure up? A survival pack does it have ammo it looks like a bedroll on top that seems strange to me the armor he has that's also removable that seems a bit more practical and you got some awesome green lantern sculpting on the shoulder pads and then finally the big beefy green lantern construct minigun chain gun whatever you want to call it gatling gun and some really awesome sculpt here as always that's mcfarland's specialty and these are all just green transparent hunks of plastic but there is detail there. It's a similar accessory to the one we got with the animated Jon Stewart. I don't actually have that accessory on hand right now. It's a bit of a brighter color. It's a bit chunkier. This one's a bit more realistic, obviously, but nonetheless, a similar piece. And we're left with a pretty good Jon Stewart. And you look at him and silhouette and an overall design. This is very faithful to the original comics. And we'll even go ahead and remove this armor piece. It just kind of slides off. It's like football pads. And you look at this and it's all pretty stock Jon Stewart. But then you start to get a closer look and there's tons of detail here that has been sculpted in a total armor suit for the black parts, especially, you know, maybe something like this we might see on these green sections, but almost always. And even if you look at the card artwork here, this is a smooth suit, but to go with McFarlane's aesthetic. And I believe when he revealed this figure, he kind of talked about it briefly is that he went to DC and he said, he wanted to add detail to this figure. He wanted to give it a bit more life, more armor. I think Todd McFarlane's into that. And it definitely makes sense. He comes from the era in comics where everything was kind of overdrawn, over detailed. So much line work and different hatchings and stuff like that they used to use. So we're getting that in figure form, but on a new version of a Rebirth Green Lantern. So that's all up to personal taste. I don't mind it. I'm not like a purist with the comics. You know, you can deviate a little bit. I think that the main design is here, but I'm sure there's people that wanted the smoother suit. I'll bring in the NECA version of Jon Stewart. And this actually isn't too accurate. This isn't really like a, a Jon Stewart suit. This is just... The, uh, the Hal Jordan figure, but they gave us the option to swap heads. But just in terms of texture, this NECA superhero body, you can see is so much different from what we're getting with McFarlane, with all this detail, armor plating, and different textures and all that kind of stuff, different plastic sheens. So even with a stock comic book character, like a lot of things in this McFarlane line, it's all coming down to personal taste, and maybe it's not for everybody. But I gotta admire the creativity and the different directions that this McFarlane line has taken us. And we did actually get a Jon Stewart towards the tail end of Mattel. I don't have that figure, I wish I did actually. A lot of those later Mattels have actually gone a lot up in price. I was interested in getting Jessica Cruz recently, Green Lantern, and that's like a $100 figure now, which is crazy. I really wish I bought that back in the day, a couple years ago, but here we are now with McFarlane. They're definitely better figures overall, but I do still have some nostalgia for those DC Mattel figures. The main pieces of armor you have here, it's on the bicep. You could see there's like this ribbed texture, I guess, just lines basically going down the legs, down the, uh, the tricep and the bicep. 
and even some on the forearms here, but they seem to kind of follow where the muscles are which is interesting. The torso piece here is actually smooth for the most part, like this would be what you'd see on most of the figure if this was truly accurate. But then really the midsection here, it's got this almost completely armored look, some armor pieces here, and it's kind of a unique shape. You see it's like a V shape here. Some other details worth noting, he does have the green lantern ring. It's sculpted there with the logo and everything, and it's got the little green paint. And then I didn't look at the head sculpt. That's the most important piece, I think. And I kind of glossed over it. And it's a good look. I don't know if it screams Jon Stewart to me. I mean, if you do look at the artwork, I guess it is pretty close. You know, if you translated this comic artwork to a action figure. But I don't know, Jon Stewart to me really comes from the animated series and Justice League. That was really Jon Stewart at his best, I think. And I think even the NECA, that almost is closer in kind of the vibe it's given me. And then obviously the animated figure. This, I think he just maybe looks a bit more generic. I almost think of this more as like Al Simmons or something. But I guess it does work. I mean, really the haircut, I guess, would be the defining feature of Jon Stewart. He doesn't really have like defining features like, you know, the Bruce Wayne butt chin or something like that. Jon Stewart, you know, he's just got a strong square head and he's got that haircut. That's really all you got. And then maybe even the eyes too. Maybe if the eyes were a full green instead of just the green pupils. And again... I guess looking at this, that's not how it was in the book, but I always kind of picture Jon Stewart with the full green eyes as well. But nonetheless, I think it's a good figure, and it's a step in the right direction as getting some core DC characters, like I said. There's a big section of the fans who just want classic comic, and you're getting that for the most part here. To go over his articulation, you see the head. It's going up pretty far, actually. You can get him in a decent flight stance, especially if you combine it with the back on the torso here. Going down is pretty decent, too. You're even getting a little bit of a gap here. You can see there's a green peg, which is interesting. Torso has the double ball joint, so that side-to-side -side movement is pretty spectacular. The back movement all the way, again. So if you're going flying pose, I mean... That's just about as good as you're gonna get right there. But when you're crunching forward, it's really not the same situation. It's also creating a gap over here. And I wonder, yeah, it creates a gap here too. So kind of ugly, this V-shaped piece. He's got butterflies, these are cast in green. They're better than some, but again, I think modern butterflies and a lot of figures, they're really more like accessory joints. They're there to kind of support what's already there, but they're not the main source of movement. It's really just like little micro movements, little adjustments you can make with these. And I think that's just to not take away from the actual sculpt. You wouldn't have butterflies going into the whole chest and then he kind of looks like he's skinny shoulders or something he does have the bicep cut the double jointed elbow and then the wrists are on the mcfarlane system as always and speaking of that the legs as well so mcfarlane legs seems like one's going out further than the other kickbacks not too good forward is decent but it is a bit uh out to the side i guess you could say the knees are double kind of ugly but that's the mcfarlane way you got these kind of flat double knees nothing on the boots and then you're getting the mcfarlane hinges at the feet as well as the toe hinge. And with the John Stewart Green Lantern all but taken care of, let's go ahead, let's do my favorite part. Let's bring in some other figures and let's do some comparison. And the most direct comparison I guess you could make is with this animated figure from wave one of the McFarlane Toys line all the way back January 2020, what a different time it was. But you could see this is definitely Todd's favorite Green Lantern, like I said, two versions of the character that any other Green Lanterns, I guess if you count Dawnbreaker. But you can see there's definitely differences here, style-wise, even the costume. This is the smoother look that I was talking about in here. You could see, you can really tell how much more detailed and armored up he looks. But nonetheless, I like both of these figures. As you could see, making use of this figure stand, really one of the only times you're going to be able to actually use these things. Really one of the only times where these things are useful is with these animated series figures. Really skinny legs. And I'd be here all night trying to get him to stand up naturally. So the figure stand really comes in handy here. I seem to have a bit better luck with the Batman animated series and the Superman animated series. But these are both pretty much Justice League versions as well. The Batman has some design conflicts going on. He's really like a new Batman Adventures Batman with a old school deco. But that's another topic for another day. These really don't go together. But, but for those who are curious. And I actually just wanted to look at these figures, these animated ones because they're the only ones I don't display. For some figures that are gonna go a little bit better with this guy, we got the Action Comics 1000 Superman. Love how these two look together, and now that I see them together, they're definitely two of my favorites in this whole line. And then we have the sad Batman from Detective Comics 1000, and really it's just one of the worst figures that McFarlane's made, but it's the only classic Batman that we really have. For all the argument that Todd's making too many Batmans, he really needs to redo this one, because all the other ones we have are Dark Knight's Metal, Death Metal, White Knight, Arkham Games. They're not classic suit Batman. This is really our only option right now. And then we have The Flash to kind of round out this current version of the Justice League we have with McFarlane. And then from the same wave, we have the Death of the Family Joker Nightwing that we just took a look at. And these two figures really make the scale apparent, the issues that this line has. 
because they're making Jon Stewart look short. And I don't have any Green Lanterns from Mattel, but I do have two Sinestro Lanterns. That's the Batman and the Cyborg Superman. Two of my favorites just because of how kind of obscure these designs are. I definitely do need to pick up some Mattel Green Lanterns. I want that Jessica Cruz. I want the new Jon Stewart. There's definitely a Hal Jordan in there I need to pick up. And you're talking Sinestro, Kilowog. I mean, if you go back to DC Universe Classics, there's so many Lantern characters. And I don't know if we're ever going to get there with McFarlane. So I might need to kind of build up a Green Lantern collection with the older figures. And then finally, we brought them in before. But these are really two of my favorite things in my collection. That whole DC Dark Horse NECA set is really one of the crown jewels of my collection. And here I have both the Hal Jordan and the Jon Stewart head swap from the... Green Lantern versus Predator set. And I think at least with Hal Jordan, it's really the definitive version of the character, the best figure, I think. He's a bit stiff, but if you can get past that, perfect, like, right off the page look. For the Jon Stewart, you could argue, maybe there's better ones out there, because it's not really Jon Stewart's look. It's Hal Jordan's costume with a Jon Stewart head on it. But other than that, if they took this body and repainted it with this color scheme, this would be the definitive figure also. I think it would beat out the McFarlane for me, but because this is, you know, the, the classic Jon Stewart look, the black kind of bodysuit with the shoulder pieces, I don't know which way to go, but two great options here, and definitely the definitive Hal Jordan. And that does just about do it for the Jon Stewart Green Lantern, and it's a great figure, and like I said a bunch of times throughout this review, it's great that McFarlane's finally getting to some core Justice League, core DC characters. He couldn't help himself, he still put a little bit of his own spin on it with all the armored up bits. But overall, the silhouette's there, the look is there. It's a very solid Jon Stewart Green Lantern. I'd say if you can't afford the uh, the NECA version, or if you're just not a fan of him being basically in Hal's costume, this might be the way to go. I don't know really the whole history of Jon Stewart figures. That's really the only one I have is the, uh, is the NECA. I don't know if DC Collectibles maybe has made a better version, or if you want a 6-inch version, I'm sure there's plenty of Mattel versions. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this, and it actually makes me want to go and buy more Green Lantern-related things. I want to flesh out my Mattels, maybe buy another NECA, do some head swaps. I don't know. If anything, McFarlane, in the odd chance you're listening, make some more Green Lanterns, because I'm going to buy all of it again. One of my favorite sections of comics is the Green Lanterns. Just such a cool history and a lore. And I think there's just something to having like a whole shelf of the Green Lantern Corps. They're all in the uniforms. They're all different, but they all go together. So that's really cool. If you missed my review of the death of the family Nightwing, you can see that. It's my previous upload. You can head to my Instagram, scoopman underscore 5000, where you'll find this library as well as my whole library of figure photography. But that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next action figure review.